Hi, my name is Melissa Mouton. I'm a registered dietitian and nutrition consultant here in Austin, Texas. And I'm here to talk to you today about some foods that you can add to your diet that are anti-cancer to help in your fight against cancer or prevent your risk of developing cancer and increase survival if, if you've been diagnosed with cancer. In 2007, the American Institute for Cancer Research put out a report that summarized all of the research that's out there that has to do with cancer and nutrition. And they looked at thousands and thousands of studies that are out there and they wanted to decide, okay, with all of this research that's out there, what do we know? What does it tell us about cancer and nutrition? What can we recommend to the public that they eat? And they were able to come up with 10 recommendations. The first recommendation had to do with weight and they said to achieve a healthy body weight, to be as lean as possible without becoming underweight. And the next recommendation said to get as much exercise as possible, but at least 30 minutes a day. And then there were several other recommendations that had to do with what you actually put into your body. One of the recommendations I mentioned avoiding sugary drinks, uh, avoiding processed foods and processed meats, limiting your intake of red meat, and so those recommendations talk about well what not to do, what not to put in your body. One of the recommendations though said what you should be eating and it says to eat mostly foods of plant origin. So that's what I want to talk about today. What are some of those foods that you should be putting into your body that are anti-cancer? Broccoli, for example, is in the cruciferous vegetable group. That includes things like cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli, of course, Brussels sprouts. These are those sort of smelly vegetables. They have sulfur-containing compounds called indole-3-carbonyls that have been shown in research to be very potent cancer fighters. So definitely want to have broccoli or other cruciferous vegetables high on your list. Another category of healthy vegetables to include are dark green leafy veggies. And this is kale, which is considered a dark green leafy veggie, but it's also considered a cruciferous vegetable, so it falls under the category of those indole 3 carbonyl veggies that are very potent anti-cancer fighters. Um, but kale, uh, being a dark green leafy veggie, um, also has folate and other vitamins and minerals that are very good cancer fighters. Um, kale, you can see this is a red kale actually, but it, it is, does fall under that dark green leafy group with collard greens, chard, spinach, um, several of, of those uh, dark green leafy veggies should be very high on your list for a daily consumption. Also, the orange veggies and fruits um, are considered uh, one of the top to include in your list of veggies that you want to have in your diet these brightly colored or dark orange um, veggies and fruits have something in them called beta carotene and other cancer fighters. Um, but one thing I do want to mention um, that was also in that report is one of the recommendations said to aim to get most of your nutrients from your foods, not from supplements. To avoid high dose supplements for cancer prevention or cancer treatment. And that's not something that they just threw out there and, and decided to put in the report. There's actually research backing that up. Some research studies have indicated that it could be harmful to have high-dose supplements um, in your fight against cancer. There's one study in particular called the CARET study, C-A-R-E-T, that they did where they took smokers and they divided them into two groups. One group of smokers, they gave a beta-carotene pill in a very high dose and the other group of smokers, they, they did not give the pill to. They actually had to stop the study early because those that were receiving the high beta carotene pill were developing lung cancer more frequently than the group of smokers that did not receive the pill. So we can't just take that one little nutrient out of the carrot and put it in a pill in a high dose and expect that we're going to have the same effect that we see in a, a diet that's high in beta carotene. Um, so we do want to try to focus on getting our fruits, or our nutrients from fruits and vegetables in a mostly plant-based diet. And that doesn't include just the fruits and vegetables that I have on this plate here. Um, these are some of the, the top ones, um, but uh, a wide variety of a lot of different fruits and vegetables is what you want to aim for. 
I'm going to strive for about five servings of vegetables a day, and that comes out to about two and a half cups of vegetables, and four servings of fruit a day, and that's about two cups of fruit. So um, in, in addition to these healthy foods, you want to also look at um, whole grains, that's also going to be in the plant food category, legumes, and nuts and seeds. And why is it that these foods are so high in um, protective properties and considered anti-cancer? Well, it's those phytonutrients. Like I mentioned, that endo-3-carbonyl that's in the broccoli. There's also the beta-carotene I talked about in the, the orange veggies and fruits. And then in red, even tomatoes are high in something called lycopene which has been associated with reducing risk of prostate cancer. And when you cook your tomatoes, it actually makes that lycopene more absorbable. You get more of it out of the, the tomatoes and more of it absorbed into your body. So cooking your tomatoes is a good idea. Um, raw and cooked, we often hear that question, well, is it better to have a raw diet for cancer prevention or fighting cancer recurrence? And really the answer to that is to have a combination of cooked and raw foods in your diet. Some foods um, you'll see higher nutrients when they're cooked, like the lycopene in the tomatoes, and some you'll see higher in raw vegetables. So having a combination of both of those is, is what's important. Um, in addition to the plant foods that we see here, you'll notice I have some mushrooms sitting here. Now these aren't actually plant foods, they're not animal foods either, they're fungi. So they have their own animal kingdom, their own kingdom. So not animal, not plant, fungi. But they're on the plate here because they also have antioxidants, so they have those phytonutrients in them, and they are high in immune enhancing properties. So very good for the immune system. A variety of different types of mushrooms should be included in, in your diet, including uh, shiitake mushrooms, uh, these are baby portobello mushrooms, the large portobellos are excellent as well, cremini mushrooms, so all the different types of mushrooms um, are excellent to be a part of a healthy diet. So at the end of the day, a wide variety of fruits and vegetables is beneficial for everyone. And the reason for that is these phytonutrients that I was talking about, plants make those in order to protect their cells. And it turns out that those same compounds made by the plants to protect themselves are also beneficial in protecting our cells to fight against cancer and other chronic diseases. So if you have had cancer, following this type of diet with lots of fruits and vegetables is um, a key. If you are wanting to reduce your risk of developing cancer also, these are great foods to have in your diet. If you're currently undergoing cancer treatment, I recommend that you follow the advice of your doctor and uh, include these foods in your diet as is allowed per his recommendations. Thank you so much for being a part of this Live Strong educational opportunity. I look forward to answering your questions in our Q&A session.